Thanks for clicking play. In this video, we're gonna be fixing, refurbishing, and fitting my roof rack for a Ford Transit long wheelbase, rear wheel drive, jumbo, Mark 7, Ford Transit thing, I already said that. You've gotta know this isn't a how-to video. Um, this is me learning as I go along and just filming it. You know, sometimes it turns out really, really wrong, in which case it's entertaining. Sometimes it goes all right, and you might be able to learn something from it. But this is the start of the video, so I don't know which way that's gonna go right now. Okay, so I bought this rack about a month after buying the van. Uh, it was 150 quid, long wheelbase rack, and it came with a ladder as well, which is a bit of a bargain. But when I turned up to collect it, me and the guy, I was buying it off, couldn't fit it onto the van. So we took a few of the parts off, squeezed it into the back of the van, and when I got home, I realized I couldn't get it out on my own. And even if I did, it was too big to go in my house. So I had to fully disassemble it to get it into the house whilst I was waiting to get it fitted. But after fully disassembling it, I realized that, you know, a few of the bolts were broke, some of the screw heads had rounded, some of the sections it goes into had rounded, the paint was looking very tired, and there was a few scuffs and scrapes everywhere. So while it was in pieces, I thought I might as well have a go at refurbishing it. The reason it's taken so long though is once I disassembled it, it's, it's massive, like it is, it is huge. So I had to rebuild my entire basement just to have a workbench long enough to sand it and paint it. So that's where we are right now. I have already done one test where I used a wire brush to scuff it up and paint it, and it doesn't look brilliant. It might have been the cheap brush I was using as well, but you can see the swirls from the wire brush. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean one up and paint that, and I'm gonna sand one a little bit and paint that and see what the best result is to start with. Alright, so obviously I've given them time to dry and after test number two, the first one that I sanded looks the best, like it's got this nice gloss finish to it, but you can see all the scratches where I used the rough sandpaper, so it's put a really deep scratch in there that you, you, know, you can't miss, so that one didn't go great. This second one that I didn't sand, it's kind of cool because it's taken the texture of whatever coating was on it, but that also means that all the scratches and blemishes where the paint's coming up or the old texture is coming through as well, so that looks a bit horrible. So I think what I'm gonna do for a final test is I'm gonna take one and just use fine sandpaper. The last test with the fine sandpaper definitely gave the best results, so I decided to use this method and just carry on and get the rest of the rack done. Alright, so we finished painting all the accessories and stuff. Everything's turned out pretty nice, you know. It's not completely mint, but you know, it's, it's not far off being perfect. So I'm enjoying that. There's a few little bits like 
around the edges where I just need to give it a couple more coats. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it'll be fine. Next is the very front of it, like the aerodynamic bit, which is uh, uh, big, this big beast here. Uh, this one has got tons of scratches on it, so I'm gonna give this a full sand down and we're gonna get this one painted next. So that's the front piece, the wind deflector thingy done. Uh, pretty straightforward, nice long flat, quite easy. Next is going to be uh, this thing, the ladders for the back, which is going to be a bit more complicated. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have to give it a clean because it's uh, cobwebby. Uh, but then I'm going to have to remove the handles, so the bolts are probably going to be rusted on on that. I'm going to remove these back sections as well. Uh, once it's all dismantled, I'll get it sanded and then probably masking tape these uh, scratch plate foot things uh, before I start painting. Already we've got a problem. So these bolts are super rusty. They're just, they're not coming out. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go at them, but they're probably just gonna get chopped out. Yeah, I don't know. This one was that rusted that I actually bent my mole grips trying to get it undone and it was still stuck.
Okay, now that the ladder's done, gotta do the pieces for the ladder, and straight away there's an issue, because that is bent, I'm not sure if you can see that. So I need to straighten that bit out, and there's a lot of paint flaking on these pieces. I also noticed that one of the pieces had this rubber strip, which is obviously to make sure it doesn't scratch the hell out of your van, but the other piece didn't. So before I actually fit this to my van, I'm gonna have to find some sort of a rubber strip like this to keep it safe. Right, so let's get these done, and then we can move on to the final stage. We're at the final piece, the big, long, awkward rails, but once this is done, it's time for assembly. So let's crack on and get this finished. You might have already been wondering why I've been purposely scratching at the paint. Even though it's aluminium, there's certain areas where it's been corroding or oxidizing. Now this causes the existing paint to flake and bubble. If I painted directly onto the top of this, it would just end up falling off. On the other pieces, it wasn't too bad because there was only small areas here and there. But unlucky for me, this rail is absolutely covered in it. Now this piece was definitely the longest to paint and that's not just because of its size, it was really awkward at the same time. So I'd have to give it one full coat, wait until that dried, turn it over, give it another full coat. But because of all the curves and angles, it was hard to see the parts where the paint was weaker. So I'd have to wait until it dried and gone over them. I also gave the thing a second coat because obviously on the sanded areas, the paint was quite thin. But after two coats, it came out looking really, really nice. Okay, so that is the rack prepped and ready to go on my van, so pretty exciting. Uh, summary time, and for those who've watched my videos before, you'll notice I normally do the summary on my spare transit seats over there, but the lighting was always pretty rubbish, so I've moved over here, set up some actual lighting to hopefully make it look a bit better. I'll keep this summary as short as I can because that was just a long, boring video of me 
painting stuff really uh, but maybe you find it entertaining I don't know anyway first thing I learned is I should have got it bead blasted a friend of mine suggested this at the very start I actually got it priced up at a local place but they said it was going to cost 70 quid which I thought I'll save myself some money I'll do it myself uh, big mistake the prep work just added extra days pro well probably in the grand scheme of things it added an extra week so for the fact of me paying 75 quid and getting it done in one day you know winner if you're doing this get it bead blasted Next, painting. Um, I just started painting it and my friend said, why are you doing that? And I was quite confused and he said, why aren't you spray painting it? And it never even occurred to me. Spray painting would have been quicker. Um, it would have given a better coating. It would have got to the hard to reach places better. So yeah, I don't even know why I painted it. I think I just had some hammerite lying around. So second thing, I would have spray painted it. Third thing, and it's not really to do with the rack, I treat myself to a new camera. I went for the Insta360 ONE R. I bought this hoping that it would add a bit more quality, it'd be a bit easier to use and a bit quicker to get through these videos. And I was massively wrong. Um, it's not as simple as point and shoot with that thing. In some areas, it's absolutely brilliant, but in others, I've got to adjust lighting. The file sizes are massive. It takes a lot longer. So if you're doing a project like this and you do treat yourself to a new camera and you want to film it, test out the camera extensively. Don't just go straight into it because there's going to be unknown factors that you come across that could add time to your projects. And that's it. It's ready. It's going to go on the van soon. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, going to be installing it on the next video. Putting it on the roof should be quite simple because it's just bolting it on. I've probably just jinxed it now. Uh, but attaching the ladder, I'm going to be drilling the very first holes in my van. So a bit worried about that, but it should be entertaining because you get to watch me ruin my van. So yeah, thanks for watching.